All right, so today I'm looking at this task two prompt. As the world becomes technologically advanced, computers are replacing more and more jobs. Describe some job positions that may be lost because of computers and discuss at least one problem that may result. And of course, as always, give reasons for your answer and include any relevant examples from your own knowledge or experience. Now, this is a bit of a strange example. I've never actually seen uh, any prompts that say describe some job positions or describe some anything and then discuss at least one problem that's result. Uh, but I mean, I don't see every single type of prompt that's ever been written. This one is a little bit unusual. But it still falls within the standard discussion essay type. So, as always, if you have a discussion essay that you need to write, the format is going to look something like this. You're going to have your introduction, your body, your conclusion. If you feel you should write a conclusion, conclusions, of course, are not mandatory for the test too. For the introduction, we can choose one of two models, but for the introduction, the models are pretty much the same. For the body, it's a little bit different because you might choose to give one example and then give a second example and then identify the problem and give one main reason for the problem. Or you can choose to write about one example, identify the problem, and give a reason, and then give a second reason. But in all in all, the number of paragraphs are going to be the same. So if you do decide to write a conclusion, you're going to have four paragraphs, regardless of whether you choose model A or model B. So let's have a look at some responses to this. I'm going to be looking at three responses. Uh, here's the first one. In this response, the writer has given titles to all the paragraphs. Please don't do that. And the total length is 550 words, which is way too long for the IELTS test. So this is not really a practical example to look at, but we're going to look at this anyway. Uh, it's broken into one, two, three, four, and five paragraphs. So the layout's not bad. Uh, the second example is 350 words long and here we have one, two, three, four, four paragraphs. So depending on how it's structured, this could also work. Third one is 269 words and we've got one, two, three, four paragraphs. And then the last one is a lengthier 345 words long and this one is one, two, three, four, five, six paragraphs long. So if you're going to write six paragraphs, of course, they're going to have to be logically structured. So let's have a look at, first of all, the introduction to all of these. All right, so let's have a look at the introductions. Here is the introduction from the really long piece of writing, the 550 words one. As computer technology continues to advance in leaps and bounds, computers, machines, often capable of performing complex calculations within a very short space of time and equipped with superhuman memory, are gradually rendering human labor superfluous. Computers have become more and more able to substitute humans in their jobs. As a result, certain job positions may grow annotated due to computers. All right. And the second one, the second piece of writing, here's that introduction. When computers first made their way into the business sector, everyone believed that they would make people's jobs easier. That was what was not expected was that computers would eliminate jobs. Besides contributing to unemployment, these automated workers often exhibit inadequate job performance. And then the third one, from the last century, the technology has been advanced more and more. Because of the technology, they are flying from one country to another country in an hour. They're saving money and time. 
by using internet services. With the help of this advanced technology, humans are getting huge benefits. Along with the advantage of the technology, there are disadvantages too. And then the last introduction. Ooh, which I can't show. And then the last introduction. The first computer in the world was believed to bring a more modern and a convenient life for people. Sorry, and people could work in less pressure environment. But everything isn't like that yet. Computers are unexpectedly replacing people's jobs. What is threatened is that an amount of unemployment can slightly go up and some jobs will be eliminated in the future. Okay, so let's just look at some of the criteria that a good introduction needs to uh, have or needs to meet in order to be good. Uh, well, it's gotta be true, first of all. It has to be related to the topic, otherwise, your task achievement score is going to be affected. And then, since we're looking at discussion essays today, your introduction needs to suggest that the subject that you're discussing is important or serious. Because you, if it's not serious or it's not important, then why are you talking about the content at all? So this seriousness is needed to logically introduce the content. So let's see if our introductions do this. Okay, so here are some edits I would make to the first introduction. There's nothing really wrong with the first sentence, and I do like these leaps and bounds. But then if we move on to the second sentence, computers have become more and more able to blah, 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 blah. Why is this the present perfect tense? Because if we are describing a process that is still occurring, well then, why not use the present continuous tense? And here, to substitute humans in their jobs, this is not the correct way to use the word substitute. If you're gonna use substitute as a verb, it's usually used by saying A is substituted for B, or A is substituted uh, or A is, no, that would be a noun. Yeah, if we use it as a verb, it will usually be A is substituted for B. You don't say something is able to substitute something else. If you want to use it like that, then substitute should be a noun. So, for example, A can be used as a substitute for B. And then in the last sentence, certain job decisions may grow antiquated. Antiquated is not the right word here. Antiquated means that something is too old to be of practical use, but I don't think that's what the writer means. And here they say due to computers. Well, it that idea was already mentioned here, how computers are rendering human labor superfluous. So, Let's not repeat that there. So that means we have something that looks like this. So let's change this present perfect tense here into the present continuous. So computers are increasingly replacing, not to substitute, uh, humans in the workplace Oh, I forgot to mention their jobs. Let's change this to workplace also. And then instead of using antiquated, why don't we use the word obsolete? So as a result, certain job positions may become obsolete. All right, here's the second introduction. This one focuses on computers in the business sector. And then the writer goes on to say, what was not expected was that computers would eliminate jobs. Now, why write this? This is not true. Of course, people expect computers to eliminate jobs. Why write this? And then in the next sentence, uh, I do like the ing here. 
Uh, these automated workers often exhibit inadequate job performance. Uh, we can find a better word than inadequate. Now, I don't want to rewrite the ideas. So, this idea still exists in my edits, but I just made it very short. Job losses were not expected, but I don't think you should say that because it's just simply not true. And then here, instead of inadequate, uh, when you talk about performances, we use adjectives like poor or great or excellent or average. So why don't we just say exhibit poor job performance. It's a bit short, kind of a weak introduction, and it's not very convincing due to the untruth it contains. Okay, here's the third example. Uh, technology has been advanced. I don't know if you I don't know why the been is used here because if you use it has been if you use the present perfect continuous then this should have the ing form and the second sentence because of technology they who are they I don't know here is some examples given of how technology benefits people there's nothing wrong with including these advantages but saying that you can fly from one country to another country in an hour, why add this? This just makes your writing seem very amateurish. So I would not suggest that. Uh, let's have a look at the edit. All right, so let's replace this from with since. And let's, let's replace this has been advanced with just has advanced. We don't need the been there. And let's get rid of the they at all. Uh, let's get rid of the they completely. Instead, let's make this the topic of our next sentence. And then we can use the word this to directly reference the previous sentence. So we start off with this noun phrase, or rather this noun. This advance makes international flight possible and internet services allow us to save money and time. So let's put the noun in the beginning of the sentence. Let's get rid of the they, because who's they? It's not clear. And let's get rid of this sentence. Humans are getting huge benefits. Um, I don't think this sentence is necessary. And the last sentence, I just changed. I just changed the first word a little bit because we've been talking about the good. Now we're going to be talking about the bad. So why not start with the word however to show that there's going to be a little change in the topic switching from advantages to disadvantages and here is introduction number four uh, some problems here the first is environment this is a countable noun so we're gonna need an article there the other one is that pressure is not an adjective so you can't say less pressure you could say less pressured but pressure by itself is either a verb or a noun and then again here we have people talking about how computers are unexpectedly replacing people's jobs now this is not something that's unexpected so writing this I don't think is true and then here what is threatened uh, if you threaten something it means the thing that you are threatening is being put in danger so if I look logically at this at this sentence, it reads, what is being put in danger is that the unemployment rate can go up. So the unemployment rate is being threatened. But that's not right. It's not that the jobs, uh, sorry, it's not that the unemployment rate is being threatened. Jobs are threatened. So this person is using the word threatened along here this is not very clear an amount of unemployment can slightly go up 
Uh, if that is a problem, why use the word slightly? If you are going to introduce an idea, you have to introduce it in a way that sounds serious. But if you say, oh, it's just a slight problem, well, if it's just a slight problem, then why write about it? Then it's not significant enough to write about. So let's get rid of this. Uh, this add amount of employment is measured as a percentage usually. It's called the unemployment rate. So let's use the term that is commonly used, unemployment rate, not this kind of strange term. Which then brings us to this. So a less stressful environment. So the adjective is going to be stressful because environment is a countable noun. We have the article a. Uh. And then this phrase here, which I didn't really talk about, I replaced that with, however, that vision hasn't come true yet. Computers are unexpectedly taking people's jobs. I'm leaving this in because I don't want to rewrite the main idea of the writer. I just want to improve it. Uh, so let's replace this with danger. The danger is an increase in the unemployment rate. And instead of this eliminated, why don't we use the word obsolescence? The obsolescence of, of certain jobs in the future. And you might even argue this has already started. It might not be confined just to the future. But I wanted to use the same words as the writer. Okay, so now we get to the body. This is where you are going to give your first example. And here is the first body paragraph from the first piece of writing. First of all, jobs that involve manual labor could be easily replaced by computers as well as machines. For example, workers who are responsible for staffing the cashier of a supermarket could be forced out of their jobs because the tasks they perform involve limited creativity and are simple and repetitive. These days, machines dealing with payments are already by no means an uncommon spectacle in supermarkets. Some supermarkets can even get rid of human staff members entirely. Face-to-face -face and personal communications can be superseded by customers' interaction with a computer instead, which, which receives commands and performs tasks accordingly. The only difference between a between a human to human transaction and a human to machine transaction is that the former involve verbal communication while the latter involves pressing a few buttons. So we can see why the total length comes to 550 words. A lot of unnecessary information in here. And then the second response, a number of jobs have been lost as a result as a direct result of new computer technology, ticket agents in various transportation facilities from subway underground stations to airports are virtually non-existent these days. Bank tellers have been greatly reduced due to automated bank machines. In addition, many call centers that have helplines are almost entirely computerized. A few years ago, I worked as a helper in our local library. Today, this position does not exist because six new computers have been installed. The number of positions lost to computers grows exponentially and unemployment continues to get worse. Okay, so this person focuses on ticket agents, bank tellers, and call centers. <laughs> Maybe too many ideas here. And then he goes on to talk about the library. Let's choose one, or at the most two of these, and then expand on those. But just listing jobs is maybe not such a good idea. Alright, here's the third one. Postman who delivers letters, money, and other things is nowhere to find in this modern world because of the electronic mail service services and ATM machines. In very rare cases, he appears at our doors. 
as the world has been advancing in technology more, people get rid of postmen. For example, before the ATM machines evolved, everyone had to use the services of a postman to send or get money from their allegiances, <laughs> acquaintances, relatives, relatives, etc. In order to send letters or messages to their people, beloved one, beloved one. But the electronic mail system has made the postman in our streets disappeared. All right, so this person focuses on one job and then goes on to say why this job is being threatened. Okay, and the last one, it's obvious that a number of jobs be lost as a direct result of new computer technology. E-teacher program on the computer can make lectures with many kind of subjects such as English, geography, chemistry, math, physics. This program nearly provides necessary information that people just need to contact to a computer for their study without another direct teacher. As a consequence, teacher will be replaced by the computer. Okay, so they started off with a general position. Lots of jobs can be lost. They focused on teachers and how this technology threatens this job. So focuses on one job. Okay, so here's an edit of the first uh, essay body paragraph of the first response. Now, this person writes, first of all, jobs that involve manual labor could be easily replaced by computers. But first of all, first of all, what? It's not clear to me what this first refers to. Remember, you are supposed to identify jobs that can be replaced by machines. So if you can, if you just say first of all, it's not clear that you are talking about the first kind of job, or that this is the first danger, or that this is the first potential drawback. Be specific about what the first of all refers to. Now, they talk about how manual labor could be easily replaced by computers as well as machines. Computers are machines. Do we really need both? And if this is a danger, why use the modal? If this is not really going to happen, let's get rid of them. Let's get rid of the modal. And then here, this person seems to have maybe the wrong understanding of what the word staffing means, what it means to staff something. Workers who are responsible for staffing the cashier. Now, a cashier is a person. It's the person who works in the supermarket or convenience store or something like that. The person who works with the cash register. You don't staff people. You can staff a department. You can staff a company, but you can't staff people. So staffing supermarkets, okay. Staffing the cashier, no. Uh, here they use could again. It's just if you keep on using modals, it sounds like you don't think this is really a danger. Here they use the word spectacle. Uh, Spectacle is not used in the right way here. Spectacle is not just something you see. Uh, spectacle is something out of the ordinary that happens. Supermarkets can even get rid of human staff. There's not much, there's nothing really wrong with using this if you're speaking. But if we're doing academic writing, maybe get rid of can be replaced by a more formal term. Face-to-face -face and personal communications. Um, I don't know what the difference is. What's the difference between face-to-face -face and personal? Okay, and then for customers, we need an apostrophe. This should be a possessive. I don't know why interaction is in quotation marks. That's not necessary. 
And then here towards the end, this person goes on to explain how the transactions happen. This is why this essay is 550 words long. You don't have time to get into details and explain how machines work. That's not what you're asked to do. This is irrelevant detail. Now there is some good to this. I mean, there is a central topic. The topic is manual labor. The example is restricted to just people working in a supermarket and they expand on the example. So all of that is good. This is very lengthy and we can maybe improve on this a little bit. Uh, I got rid of the modal here. I replaced it just with a B verb so they are easily replaceable by computers as well as machines. <clears throat> For some reason here, I still kept this in. Uh, we just get rid of this now. So let's just say machines. Okay, and then when we get to the example, I made the supermarket cashiers the topic of my sentence. Instead of workers who are blah, 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 this is very clunky. Let's just make the cashiers the topic. So cashiers who perform repetitive tasks will be made redundant instead of saying, where is it now, could be forced out of their jobs. I just replaced this phrase with the word to be, with the phrase to be made redundant. I replaced spectacle with sight. That's a more appropriate word. And this phrase get rid of. It's been replaced by layoff. Oops, let's try this. Some supermarkets even lay off their entire staff. Uh, this part here about the interaction, sorry, the communication. I just said face-to-face -face interactions are superseded by interaction with the screen instead. And I left this out. This is irrelevant detail. And here is the first body paragraph from the second essay. And there's a lot to like in this paragraph, especially the grammar. Uh, look at all the adverbs or and adjectives that I used. Like for example, direct result, virtually non-existent, greatly reduced, entirely computerized, uh, grows exponentially. These adjectives and adverbs that I used are really good. And also, like for example here, putting the number of positions as the subject of the of the sentence putting that in the front to emphasize the importance of this this is good uh, we've got a lot of examples of the present perfect tense that's being used but there are also some things that I would change like for example here the present tense is used. I wouldn't use the present tense. I would use the present continuous since we're describing something that happens right now. But anyway, uh, let's start from the beginning. So they focus on ticketing agents and bank tellers and then also something about the library. It might be better just to focus on one job. Uh, but they do like for example, the ticketing agents, this idea is not really developed. The bank tellers, this idea is not developed. The call centers, not developed. And the example here is not directly related to these jobs, although the effect is the same. Well, anyway, let's start in the beginning. Um, the idea is introduced uh, they give the example of the first job, but then they say subway underground stations. Is it really necessary to use two words to describe the same thing? And then here where they talk about the bank tellers, bank tellers have been greatly reduced. 
that's not exactly right. It's the number of bank tellers, not just bank tellers. And then here, call centers that have helplines. Don't all call centers have helplines? If they don't have a line, how can you call them? It doesn't exactly make sense to me. Okay, so here's what I might do to improve it a little bit. Uh, instead of saying subway underground, let's just choose one word since we're talking about the same thing. We don't need two words. And then the bank tellers have been greatly reduced. It's not the bank tellers, it's the number of bank tellers has been greatly reduced. The part about the helplines, I left that out, that doesn't make sense. And here I replaced the present tense with the present perfect tense. And the get worse, let's use a different word. Let's use worsen. Similarly, we wouldn't say get better, we would say improve. So don't say get worse, let's go with worsen. Here's the third example. In this example of the first body paragraph, we see a pretty weak example. This person chose to focus on postman. I don't know if I would have chosen that. A lot of the ideas are repetitive and a lot of the information is not really necessary. I mean, you don't need to explain to us what postal clerks or postal workers do. You don't need to explain the job for us. And then some things <laughs> are simply not true, I don't think. Like that you can't find them anymore. And that they rarely appear at our door. They've disappeared from our streets. I, don't, I just don't think that's true. I don't know where you live, but where I live, I definitely see them on the streets. So it's pretty weak. Um, this is in the singular. I'm not sure why. So we would need to change the B verb. Like I said, this I think is just not true. People get rid of postmen. Um, I just don't think that's true either. They talk about the machines that evolve. This is perhaps not the right word to be using for machines. Animals, yeah, machines, maybe not. This allegiance is not the right word. And this is already mentioned here, which is already mentioned here. So he repeated or she repeated the same idea three times. So even though I don't really agree with the idea, I don't think it's true. I did leave it in here, but I replaced postman with postal workers. Um, I just changed this a little bit, this idea here, uh, because of electronic mail services and ATA machines. Uh, I left this out because this is just a repetition. And this evolved, I said, before the widespread use of the ATM, instead of the evolution of the ATM. Uh, this person went on to talk about who you can get or send money to, who you can get money from or who you can send money to, all these examples. This is not the right word. I don't think you need to explain who we can send money to. Uh, so this is irrelevant detail and like I said a lot of repetition so we can actually distill the whole paragraph into one two sentences maybe not a very strong example this is example four what I like about this is they choose one topic and develop the topic throughout so as far as cohesion and coherence goes that's not bad because the topic is developed but there are a lot of grammatical errors like be lost this is in the singular uh, this is more of a vocabulary problem you don't make lectures here's a grammar problem wrong preposition I don't know why this is not capitalized English Chinese or whatever if it's a subject it's got to be capitalized this is a vocabulary problem. This program nearly provides 
if you say it nearly provides, it means it almost provides. So in actual fact, it does not provide. Contact to a computer. Contact doesn't go with the preposition to. You contact someone or you contact something. You don't contact to someone or something. And you also don't contact computers. It's a different verb we can use there. Direct teacher is perhaps not the right word to use there. And here, for this noun, we either need to say the teacher or teachers. We're not talking about just one teacher. We're talking about teachers in general, right? So there's some good in the development, but a lot of errors with grammar and vocabulary. And also, if you look at the sentences, oh, also here. Don't do that. <laughs> Finish your thoughts or put a period there. Don't use ellipsis in your writing. So this is how I might change this writing. Uh, by the way, just be careful with using the word obvious. If you're saying that something is obvious, just make sure that it is in actual fact obvious. Because what's obvious to you might not be obvious to everyone. Anyway. So this be lost, let's replace that with the present perfect tense, have been lost. This program needs to be in the plural. Can make lectures. Uh, I'm not really sure if, I'm not familiar with this program, so I don't know if the program actually does the lecture or if the program is used to record the lecture or produce the lecture. So this might be replaced with produce or record, I'm not sure. If the program is actually doing the lecturing, then we could use do. So I'm not sure, this might not also not be the correct verb because I'm not entirely sure what this program does. English needs to be capitalized. We need to get rid of this. So it just provides, not nearly provides. And then here, I don't know why this that is there. So let's instead say making study with a real life teacher unnecessary. And then this teacher needs to be either the teacher or teachers. I chose to say teachers, but if you said as a consequence, the teacher is being replaced by the computer. You know what, actually that might be better since we say the computer. So let's make this as a result. Whoa, as a result, the teacher is being replaced. That would be better. Since we say the computer, let's also say the teacher. Okay, so now we get to the second essay body paragraph. This is where you would either give your second example or perhaps your first reason. And this is the first essay. Secondly, so the second example if you remember this person when they wrote, I think it was in the first place or firstly, didn't actually say what this adverb refers to. Does it refers does it refer to an example? Does it refer to a reason? So even though this is not wrong, it doesn't specifically say second example or second reason. Uh, this is an adjective, so we're gonna need a be verb there. Ah, we can also notice again, we have a very long paragraph here. The part here about, oh, actually, this is really good. The part about experts in artificial intelligence and futurists. Mm, I especially like the futurists part. This is a good word to use, speculated. Um, Complex problem, that's good. Fraction of the time, that's really good. Human counterparts, really good. Conduct a quick search of its database, that's also really good. 
Case laws is good. Ordinance, not so good. Because ordinances are not the same as laws. Ordinances are usually regulations passed by cities. So ordinances refer to legislation at a local level. It's not the same as the laws of a country. And I think that is what the person writing wanted to say. Uh, this analyze is now wrong after it is analyzed, but there is a better way of saying this. In a legal problem, problem is maybe not the right word to use here. There's a problem here with the word order. Artificial intelligence could even learn on its own sophisticated rules. There's just a problem with the word order of this on its own and the sophisticated rules part. This last part we can just leave out because they add the idea of doctors and nurses but well two things one it's too long already remember the total word count is 550 and here is another example of why it's so long there's a lot of detail we can leave out all right the screen is going to be a little bit cramped here because we've got two long paragraphs so this is an adjective we need a be verb are repetitive this may mm, if your argument depends on this being true let's not use the modal may so let's just say are being replaced uh, this part here I wouldn't really change anything the case loss like I said is really good but ordinances let's replace that with laws and this analyzed since it's the same the same doer let's say the same the same thing the same computer doing the action we can use the ing here because the computer is doing the search and the computer is also doing the analysis so with the second verb we can use this ing after analyzing a legal issue here it was legal problem let's change that with issue and then I mentioned the word order here so why don't we say uh, learn sophisticated sophisticated rules of financial accounting on its own so the on its own should come after what it is it learns this I'm gonna leave out it's just unnecessary it's this paragraph is really long as it is it's not realistic to expect someone to write this much in let's say 40 minutes the second example didn't have a second essay body paragraph dealing with another example so I'm not talking about it here so if you move on to the third example uh, this person wrote about banks accountants and then employees I don't know if in their mind the accountants work in banks or if these are all separate instances of people or institutions using computers I'm not sure that's why I underlined it here there's nothing wrong with that I'm just not sure if they are talking about accountants in banks or if these are two distinct examples anyway he said the employees we don't need the article the since we're talking about employees in general the same for the accountants we don't need the article uh, pens and paper we can just say sorry pen and papers we can just say pen and paper it's not for records it's for record keeping the only few employees let's just say few employees this last idea is not really clear to me employees have been needed to operate computers to save the log um, I don't know if this is a computer log but computers save that automatically I don't believe that employees are needed but anyway again we don't need the we can just say logs so there's a definite problem here with articles this person doesn't know how to use the definite article in English 
the argument is pretty weak. It's not really expanded on clearly enough. And definite systematic error here with the articles. Before we go on to the next example, I just want to look at the writing band descriptors for task two, specifically coherence and cohesion band six. Let's look at the paragraphing mentioned here. This is uses paragraphing, but not always logically. So remember, a paragraph contains a topic and then it contains supporting sentences regarding the topic. So each paragraph should have one topic. So let's keep this in mind as we look at the next example. Okay, so here we have three paragraphs detailing how some jobs are lost to automation. The first one is about some jobs in the post office. The second one is about banks. The third one starts off by talking about buses and subways and the people there. And then they move on to talk about libraries and cinemas or cinema theaters, as it says here. So specifically here in the last paragraph, we can see that there's no real topic. Is this person writing about buses or subways or are they talking about theaters? It's not clear. And a lot of this is kind of repetitive uh, because a lot of the detail is about what people in banks do. They use ATMs to withdraw money. Postal service workers deliver letters. Do you really need to write that? I mean, that's common knowledge. You don't need to explain to the examiners how an ATM works or what postal workers do. That's surely not necessary. Anyway, um, post office. The post office or post offices. But it would be better to say the post office since we're talking about the post office as an institution. Also R, here we have a problem with word order. This is in the singular. Actually, this whole paragraph reminds me of, I think it was the second example we looked at. The ideas are very similar. Electronic mail system, this should be plural. On computer, it should either be the computer or computers because of saving more time and money. Uh, There's a grammar problem here. Because of, you cannot have a gerund in this position. This is simply not true, like I mentioned before. You can still see people on the road delivering mail. This is not true. Furthermore, this is a new idea, bank tellers. It's a separate idea from people in the post office. So this furthermore does not further explain or detail this topic. So you could say additionally, but this idea in this paragraph is not furthering this idea. This is a separate idea. So no furthermore bank tellers are placed by automatic bank machine a teller is a person who works in a bank the people in the bank are not placed by the machines I'm not sure what the person is trying to say here uh, this should be plural the ATM as a part of smart computer system. System is a countable noun, so we need an article. This part here, I don't know, this is, seems irrelevant to me. Don't explain how people withdraw money. And you don't withdraw money in a credit card. You withdraw money using a credit card. Transactions are countable. But actually, this is not really clear to me. <laughs> Employees are hired to operate computers for transactions. To be honest, I'm not entirely sure what that means. Transaction is when a client or a customer does business with the bank. 
I, I don't know why computers are necessary for that, but okay. Uh, this here has no clear topic. This should be the bus. Can exist when, uh, uh, this is a pretty basic error here. The machines don't help do the task because here you say they can't exist. So that means no inspector. If there's no inspector, how is the inspector being helped by the machine? Logically, that doesn't make sense to me. Uh, besides coming to libraries, this should be going to libraries. We, where we are now, there's no library. So we can't say come, it's got to be go. Cinema theaters, choose one. Don't put both words together. Find someone to help for their request. This is not the right article. This doesn't mean anything. So why write something that's meaningless? All right, so let's look at this paragraph by paragraph. So post office should be the post office. Also R, R also. Let's replace this with postal workers. The system should be plural. Computer should be computers or the computer. Uh, okay, so this part here, because of saving time, saving more time and money. Uh, whoa, what am I doing here? This should be save and saving. Let's change that are the best choice for sending letters and messages since they save time and money. So let's replace this with since they save more time and money. This I will leave out since it's just simply not true. In the second par paragraph, let's replace furthermore with additionally, since this is an additional example, it doesn't further explain the first one uh, this R placed, I'm guessing the person wanted to say replaced, not placed. And let's put the ING there since the process is not finished. This machine should be machines, which help. This should be no S there. Uh, the ATM is part of a smart computer system since system is accountable now. We do need an article there. The credit card, you can leave that out. Entering into a bank, let's just say entering a bank. Uh, operate computers for transactions. I'm not sure what this means exactly, but transactions are countable, so let's put an S there. This paragraph is very problematic because there's useless information and there isn't a clear topic but anyway bus should be buses um, if they can exist I don't know how they can be helped so let's get rid of the helped when automated machines when an automated an automated machine does that task very well I don't know why this is included it seems nonsensical to me so I put it in brackets there. Okay, so now we get to the essay body paragraph where you have to identify the problem. Uh, in this case, it's not really giving an opinion, good or bad. It's not really an argument essay because they ask you to identify the problem. Okay, so our first essay says the problem that may arise as a result of the replacement of humans by computers is that their job is obviously unemployment and boredom. At their job is obviously unemployment and boredom. Some people think that by the time computers are smart enough to replace most humans at their jobs, humans' livelihood would be affected and the economy would plummet. I do not believe this would be the case as wealth would flow to humans who are in control of the technology of artificial intelligence. However, 
Human laborers and workers, be they blue-collar or white-collar workers, might have to face up to the threat of boredom. They will have to deal with a perpetual sense of ennui and purposelessness, and even depression due to their lack of occupation and excitement. Should they fail to find ways to occupy themselves, they might risk feeling that their existence is pointless and even ponder putting their lives to a premature end. And our second essay said, while a computer may easily achieve the main tasks of these jobs, most computers fall short when customers have a unique request or problem. A prepaid ticket booth does not have insight about the entertainment district and cannot offer friendly directions to a tourist. Similarly, an automated bank machine cannot provide assistance and reassurance to a customer who's just had his credit card stolen. And more often than not, automated telephone operators cannot answer the one question that we have. And we end up waiting on the line to speak with someone anyway. Every time I go into the library where I worked, I noticed elderly people who don't know how to use the computers and can't find anyone to help. And then essays three and four didn't actually have a separate paragraph identifying the problem. They wrote about the problems as they discussed the jobs themselves. So I have nothing to say about these two. All right, let's have a look at the first one here. Uh, a problem that may arise is obviously unemployment and board. If it may happen, why is it obvious? Uh, okay, uh, this here in green, uh, I would rewrite this. I would put unemployment, sorry, not that. I would put unemployment and boredom as the topic of the sentence. I would start the sentence with this. Um, this part in red here, I put this in red because it doesn't really make sense to me. So this writer says, a problem is obviously unemployment. And unemployment will, some people might think that unemployment is going to affect people's livelihood. But I don't believe this is going to be the case. Well, if you don't believe this is the case, why do you use the word obvious here? If something is obviously going to happen, you can then go and say, well, I don't think this is going to be the case. It's logically, it doesn't really make sense to me. Uh, this part here about human laborers and workers, be they blue collar or white collar workers, there's nothing wrong with that, but we can make it a little bit more concise. So they might have to face up to the threat of boredom. Why might? Because the next sentence uses will. So is it going to happen or might it happen? Here we have a lot of words that really describe the same situation. We have ennui, purposelessness, depression, lack of occupation and excitement. Uh, essentially, the writer is talking about the same thing. So maybe we can condense this a little bit. Uh, should they fail to find ways to occupy themselves? They might risk feeling that their existence is pointless. Um, with this, there's nothing particularly wrong with this, but I just feel we can rewrite this to make it more concise. And for this here, putting, mm, you don't put someone's life to an end, you bring someone's life to an end. So this is how I might reword it. I would bring unemployment and boredom to the front of the sentence. Let's make this the topic. 
Now, the writer has already written about this numerous times. So why don't we just replace that idea with just the word trend? Uh, I do like this idea of arguing that what these people think is not necessarily what I think. So some might think. So it's not a bad idea to bring up the counter argument. This whole phrase we can replace with mechanization more concise uh, I do not believe this would be the case as wealth would flow to the humans who are in control of the artificial intelligence technology uh, let's see here the technology of artificial intelligence let's replace that with I can't find it now oh here we go artificial intelligence technology so whenever you use technology with another noun, the noun goes first and then technology. Now the human laborers and workers, is there a difference between a laborer and a worker? Why do we need both words? And then we have more words to describe workers. It's really overkill. So why don't we just say blue and white collar workers instead of all those unnecessary words. Now these feelings, um, let's cut down on the number of words that talk about feelings. Remember, the total length of this essay is 550 words. It's a bit much. Now, this last sentence, why don't we start with failing? Instead of saying, should they fail? Failing to find ways to occupy themselves. They might even ponder ending their lives. Oh, I don't know why there's an uh there. Uh, they might even ponder ending their lives prematurely. Not so much that there's anything wrong with this. It's just this writer is extremely wordy. Okay, here is the second essay. I don't have too much to say about this. Here we have achieve tasks, which perhaps we can replace with accomplish tasks. But the bigger problem here is that the writer talks about the main tasks of the jobs. But I don't know if this is a very strong argument. Because here the idea seems to be related to leisure. Here it seems to be related to safety. This seems to be just convenience and this seems to be this is a very weak argument <laughs> the last one I don't know if I don't even know what the theme is here um, when you give support a good idea is to either use lifestyle or health or maybe the environment or money or safety as a theme these themes will allow you to build a strong argument if you start off from the vantage point of let's say safety or security uh, the one here about the credit card so you could argue that these machines this automation that happens does not allow us to do banking in such a secure way as we did before and then you can give specific examples of this credit card being stolen but even this example I think is pretty weak I think all the arguments here are weak so I don't want to rewrite them I just think the support here they're based on weak themes and the actual support is weak also which brings us to the conclusion. All right, so here are the four concluding paragraphs from the four different essays. The first one, to conclude, computers are indeed a big threat to our economic goal of full employment. Their growing prominence are forcing us to change our notion of how humans can be meaningfully occupied apart from getting a job. If humans do not manage to find a meaningful occupation apart from working, they would risk feeling bored, finding their lives without a meaning, 
without a meaning and depressing. And the second one, in the future, I believe a new business trend will evolve. As computers eliminate jobs, new positions will have to be invented. More and more people will go into business and hopefully put the personal touch back into the business. I believe that the human workforce will demonstrate that it is more valuable than computers. And number three, in this way, as technology has been playing the higher role than most of the job positions. However, research opportunities regarding the technology have been increasing as the demand for technology has been growing day by day. In overall, the losing job positions is not a good sign for the employment of a country. As some job positions require little education beyond the job positions of technology. And the last one, all in all, many jobs will be replaced by computers. However, that's not actually positive. I believe that some of unnecessary jobs are lost and lots of new jobs will appear in the future. Technology is created by humans and only human can operate technology so that human workforce is extremely more valuable than technology. All right, let's look at these conclusions in turn. Okay, so here we have the conclusion from the first essay. I'm a little bit confused because I remember the writer said they don't actually think people are gonna lose their jobs. They're just not gonna be gainfully employed. Uh, but here they say it's a threat to employment. So I'm not gonna change that, but it's, it does seem to contradict what was said earlier. Now here, prominence is not a countable noun, so we need the be verb to be is, not are. And then this part, this part here about the notion of how humans can be meaningfully occupied, it's not necessarily wrong, but I just want to stress that how you are occupied is not just what you do at your work. How you are occupied is how you spend your time. So I would say our notion of meaningful human existence outside the workplace, just to make sure that we know we're not just talking about work. Now this part here, I'm gonna leave out because this was already mentioned before. This part about being bored, about being depressed, this is just a repetition of what was said in the paragraph identifying the problem don't put it in the conclusion. I forgot to mention, even though I'm not including this in what I would consider to be a good conclusion, uh, meaning is an abstract noun, as is, oops, no, not depressing. Uh, that's an adjective. Uh, meaning is an abstract noun, so we don't need the article there. So without meaning, by the way, this is a noun, this is an adjective, so you can't join the two together with just the conjunction and, that doesn't make sense. But the bigger problem here is uh, uh, it's just used with concrete singular nouns, not abstract nouns. Before we look at number two, let's just go back to the task. Describe some job positions that may be lost. Discuss at least one problem that may result. Do they ask you to solve the problem? No, they don't. So all of this is useless. Remember, you don't need to write a conclusion. Nowhere does it say you need a conclusion. If you don't have any concluding thoughts, don't write a conclusion. All of this is new ideas. None of this was mentioned in the body. So the writer would be better off not writing this. Here's number three. This writer has some interesting ideas, but unfortunately doesn't have the best grammar or the always the best vocabulary. Uh, so here we have as technology has been playing the higher role. I don't know why the as is there. I don't know about the higher. I think maybe important is the word they're looking for. An important role. 
I don't know why there's a then there. I don't know what they're comparing it to. Uh, the technology. So remember, technology is an abstract noun. So unless you're talking about a specific type of technology, we don't need the article. The in overall, I don't know why we have an in there. The losing job positions. Uh, that could be replaced by just job losses. But all of this <laughs> can really be omitted because why are they talking about job, oh, sorry, research opportunities? Overall job losses are not a good sign for the employment of a country. Why are they writing this? To me, this doesn't seem to be related to what the task demands. A lot of this is not connect. All of this, all of this here, is disconnected to the task, or disconnected from the task, rather. In this case, also, I would rather not write this. Only the first sentence makes sense but this would be too short for a conclusion here's number four number four is slightly better than number two and three but maybe not much um, all in all many jobs will be replaced by computers the jobs are not replaced by computers. The computers are doing the jobs. The computers don't become the jobs. So why don't we say many jobs will be lost to computers instead of replaced by computers. However, that is not actually positive. <laughs> but they're not asking you to discuss whether this is a positive or a negative trend. I believe that some of unnecessary jobs are lost. There should be no of there. Are lost. Now here he says will, and here he says are. So if this is will, let's keep it in the future. And lots of new jobs will appear in the future. Is this relevant? Technology is created by humans, and only humans can operate technology. Uh, machines can be operated, technology can be used or utilized so that human workforce is extremely more valuable. Let's replace that with resulting in the human workforce being greatly more valuable than technology. Again, I'm, I don't want to change the idea. I just want to fix the faulty grammar and improve on the vocabulary. I don't think this is a good conclusion. If I were the writer, I would just not write this. I would just stop after my last body paragraph.